What is up, everybody? It is Master Signified Bodies, and now we are going to talk about the ego and the other and Freud's denegation by Jean Hippolyte. So seminar one, lecture four and five are going to be combined in this video. Ego and the other and Der Verneinung, denegation. The ego and the other is an important lecture in this seminar because now we understand the role of transference and resistance and that transference of course is the phenomenon that gives rise to resistance but resistance takes place between the relation of the ego and the other we also get a commentary or kind of a snippet of Lacan's early essay called The Function and Field of Speech and Language in Psychoanalysis. This is where Lacan really starts to break away from his more imaginary phase, and he really starts to focus on speech and language. There is still the existential phenomenology side to it, as far as we observe speech. And this is actually kind of pinpointed by his son-in-law, Jacqueline Miller, in reading lectures one and two, or seminars one and two, The Return of Freud. It's a commentary text. Uh, it has a bunch of essays from various Lacanian scholars and clinicians. And the three introductions are given by Jacqueline Miller. Now he notes that for speech in the function of field of speech and language, that speech is something that is phenomenologically observed, the speech of the patient, the analysand. However, for Lacan, language has a structural linguistic aspect for him. So language, of course, is going to be, the, has to deal with the signifier and the signified, which was something that was uh, credited to by uh, Ferdinand de Saussure, the founder of structural linguistics. I don't want to go into that. I can make a separate video about that later. Um, however, I am worried about how this relates to Lacan. So, phenomenologically, when, when it comes to speech, we are observing, we're analyzing, we are, are listening. However, there is always a network of signifiers within the unconscious where certain words cling on to each other and create this network of meaning. What this has to deal for Lacan is that we see this network of meaning within what he calls full speech. And then another concept called empty speech, which has to deal with, for lack of a better term, a lack of meaning. Um, it is idle chatter. He will say that in, in the ego, the other um, empty speech expresses something, but all it expresses is pretty much the symbolic formation of the culture. Uh, we see Heidegger uh, in this seminar, or at least in this lecture, um, Heideggerian concepts like uh, the das man, the they, that this plays out in idle chatter or empty speech. All the empty speech is, is what the ego wants, what the ego speaks, and it hides the unconscious. And for Lacan, he wants to point out that unlike psychology, the ego for him or the ego for psychoanalysis, and even for Freud is not some like synthetic object uh, like you would see in philosophy, like with Kant or this pure thinking subject that presupposes things. It's rather this dynamic process that is constantly being created through the speech, the empty speech, uh, and then it leads to a failure. And then this failure is what gives rise to full speech. Now, how does this happen? So, the type of failure, or what he would say, uh, 
de degrading of speech or distortion of speech is what Freud would call the parapraxis. These are slip of the tongue and the forgetting, the forgetting of names and certain words. You see the meme on, on the screen, it's uh, Lacan, he's like, when it's been your 50th damn, that's crazy, and you still haven't made that Freudian slip. So this shows us that through the errors of the ego and the errors that happen through empty speech, we start to get something. Uh, we start to find this revelation towards error and even silence and doubt that there are Unlike science that wants to have some type of knowledge from some type of verification or certainty, we're focused on getting to some type of revelatory truth through uh, these slips of the tongues and the forgetfulness. Uh, this forgetfulness has a purpose in psychoanalysis. Overall, full speech can be known as veridical speech because it has some type of truthfulness from the deception of empty speech. Because empty speech, no matter how much you talk, will always end up leading toward full speech through these slips of the tongue, through this forgetfulness. Now, I don't want to keep you know, repeating myself like a broken record, but the importance is that there is this dynamic play between the ego and, of course, the dynamic process of the unconscious. Now, what Lacan wants to point out as an example of this forgetting or full speech is something that happened with Sigmund Freud. Uh, Sigmund Freud was with uh, traveling and, and he was with his travel partner and he wanted to mention a name of a painter. The painter was Signorelli, but he forgot the name. And of course, this might seem like just a coincidence or just some like mundane scenario. But there were actually some things that were being repressed in this forgetfulness that were being rejected. This rejection is known as ververfung, or it's a refusal to uh, be known towards the ego. So through uh, a few word associations um, and the analyzing of, of this, because he was literally trying to remember this painter's name, uh, we come across this, a patient of, I believe of his, who kind of stated, oh, um, without the joy or the feeling of sex, I would have no reason to live. You know, life would have no purpose. And then uh, another instances, I believe, of uh, somebody dying. And pretty much this also had some type of effect on Freud as well the realization of, you know, mortality and uh, temporality. How does this have any, you know, reference towards this artist Signorelli? Well, the painting that he was trying to talk about was or the Orvieto, I believe it is pronounced, which has to deal with the coming of the Antichrist bringing upon death and it's the resurrection of the flesh. You see how with words that they have some type of referential connection, this chain of signification. And if these feelings of sexuality, which were being repressed in this fear of death, simultaneously came together and were being repressed, the fact that Signorelli is bringing about a painting that has to deal with life and death and even maybe temptation of the flesh by this antichrist, this could kind of signal like a, a trigger of an affect of uh, sexual guilt and repression and even this fear of death. So you see how language functions in speech and how with full speech, it reveals some, something that is not being spoken directly. It's like this implicit thing that the analyst has to continue to um, observe and analyze and slowly bring about this affirmation 
or this what would be called biao hung or just the revelation of this truth but empty speech or the ego needs to situate itself in resistance within the session because the ego is fragile and the fra the closer it gets to its own subjectivity or its unconscious the greater its resistance can become to protect this fragility the ego is also an alienated thing or an alienated being it is alienated from the speech or this language the the unconscious and overall we see how now the dynamic not only between transference and resistance with the ego and the other, but it being applied through language and speech. We see the language as words in a network of signification, which formulate in the unconscious, which refer upon each other. And then you have speech as it is, as it is played out through discourse. This is pretty much what makes up of the symbolic, the symbolic order. We haven't really gotten towards that um, for really a knot, but we can bring it up in this just to understand that. For Lacan, we have three registers. We have the imaginary, which is where the ego resides, it has to deal with images and fantasies. And then you have the symbolic, which deals with language and uh, signification, a network. And this is created through the culture. Like we said, we talked about the ego in, in the ego and the other, that this das man or the idle chatter is made up of the symbolic order activated in speech, in this discourse. And then you have the real. The, the register of the real is something that is... Pretty much it's reality without the human reality because the symbolic is what makes our reality a human reality. Again, I don't want to go too much into depth with this because we have to say that for the next few seminars, which we will get into more detail about that. For now, we are focused on this process of empty speech and full speech. So let's tie this in now to... Uh, Hippolyte's Verneinung or his commentary on Verneinung or negation, denegation from Freud. What he wants to point out is that, of course, there is this refusal, this Verwerfung with the ego in which certain words will be refused through this forgetting. And it is then part of the repressive mechanisms in which it becomes buried into the unconscious. But there's always going to be the drives of the unconscious in which it wants to affirm something. This affirmation is known as Biao Hung, and it is going to affirm because the repress, no matter how much you try to hide it, and it's not a conscious hiding like a suppression, it is unconscious but it'll always return. And it's like there is this tug of war between the ego and the unconscious of who is fighting for control. And in the unconscious, there is this striving force of both expansive and, and repulsion. And this is this dynamic process between the ego and, and the unconscious. But overall, this expansive process to, to bring forth is hip, what Hippolyte talks about, um, eros or love. Now, I don't want it to seem like we're talking about, when I mentioned eros, like the uh, neo-Freudian revisionism of talking about um, the pleasure principle and, and death drive as eros and thanatos. It's not like this universal Manichaeanism or anything like that. What he's trying to say is pretty much that in the unconscious, what is trying to always affirm itself 
um, is this eros in so far as it is this recognition or this call to be loved. But what is trying to be loved is this primordial image or the primordial uh, image of what was seen in the mirror stage. Another thing to know is that in this ideal struggle, it's always this desire for the recognition, but that recognition is never, ever you know, fulfilled. It's never satisfied. The ego is always going to be a failure because it is an alienated image or just an alienated being. With this driving force and this denegation, repression goes through what he would say, and he refers to Hegel as a sub sublimation or, or, or sublation, alphabon, right? This doesn't mean that repression in, in its constant repetition is going to be overcome like in this like beautiful totality. No, it just, it will come up in a different light um, through different discourse between the analyst and the analyzant. The main thing to, you know, tie it all in together because we're coming to the end is that the ego is an alienated being who makes its resistance manifest in the transference, but through this constant need to be an empty speech. And once it goes to its failure, then we start to get full speech. We see this failure because it doesn't know what it wants. This failure is based upon the fact that it is a misrecognized being. That is the point of, of it being alienated because it is misrecognized. There is this knowledge in the unconscious, but the ego mistakes itself or it's what it thinks it wishes and desires as a knowledge, but that's not. What is the knowledge is what is being refused. And what is refused will come up because this rejection refusal ends up being repressed. These repressed wishes, desires, um, the fear of life and death, as we've seen in Freud through this, the, the name of Signorelli, come up through some type of association, through some type of referential um, word association or signification. And in the, the full speech from the slips of the tongue or the forgetfulness, we have this vertical speech, this revelation of some type of truth that happened from the error. Also that Biao Hung's affirmation is always going to be the affirmation of what was pretty much repressed or the affirmation of the unconscious. This was a lot, and I did this, these two lectures to the best of my ability. I felt like if I were to do them separately, they probably would not have came out as well. So playing off of both of them, because I feel like they both have to uh, play a part with one another, uh, it was a lot easier. If I forgot something, if I um, expressed like an idea in the wrong way, like for instance, if, if my description and definition of denegation or verifying was wrong, uh, please leave a comment down below and I will appreciate any comment, criticism, um, or even a thank you. If this was helpful, please let me know. And we will be back with more because then we will be going over uh, Anna Freud and Melanie Klein and the difference in psychoanalytic discourse between uh, ego analysis and then discourse analysis with object relation. Thank you all and enjoy your symptom. Have a good night.